Year 3000. Machines have conquered the world. They are now capable of great things, for example, reproducing their self and fixing any breakdowns before they will appear. It is a perfect society, and they will never need humans anymore. But will machine be able to replace humans in any possible task? First, it is important to understand why many scientists and researchers are thinking about a future like this. In fact, in the last decades, our society has produced a big amount of data that can be used for the training of artificial intelligences in order to solve many problems. One major example happened in 2016. A machine called AlphaGo was able to learn how to play a really complex game, the game of Go. In order to understand how much difficult this task was, I would like to show you two numbers. The first one, as we can see here, it's the number of atoms in the universe, 10 elevated to the power of 70s. So we have a 1 and then 70 zeros. But then, if we compare this number with the second one, which represents all the possible combinations in a match of Go, then we will see that there is a little bit different. In fact, it is 10 elevated to 700. So we have a 1 and then 700 zeros. Now, maybe it is easier to understand how much difficult playing this game was. But AlphaGo was not even able to learn how to play this game. It was also able to defeat the world's champion, Lee Sedol. And not even defeat him, but humiliated him. In particular, during one of the matches against this world champion, ma the machine decided to do a really strange move that will be called the move 37. All the human experts were thinking as in that move as a losing move. But after a few moments, they understood the importance of that action. This can be considered one and also one of the greatest and new act of creativity done by a machine. But is that a real creative action? Well, it is better to understand how creativity is classified in artificial intelligence. One of the major experts in this field, Margaret Bowden, has divided and classified creativity into three main parts. The first one is called exploratory creativity, and it is the class where Move 37 belongs to. In this case, machines try to find out what is the best action after analyzing all the possible combinations and all the possible outputs. So, is it a novel action? Well, yes, no human expert could think about an action like this. But is it surprising? Well, not at all. In fact, if we understand what are the outcomes, then we will obviously choose the same action. And that's why this is the less creative class. The second class is called combinatorial creativity. In this case, the machine has different inputs, 
different pictures, animals, buildings, for example, and then he decides to put together and mix up all these pictures in order to create a picture like this one. In this case, we can recognize many animals, fishes, birds, crocodiles, but also buildings and cars and human beings. But is it surprising? Well, looking at it, it is a really nice picture. But is it novel? Not at all, because the machine has decided to use that particular pictures that a human being gave to him. For this reason, there is a third class, which is also the one considered as the most creative one. And it is called transformational creativity. In this case, artificial intelligence creates through a particular process a new piece of art. And this new piece of art should be considered by other artificial intelligences as a human production. One example are these portraits. Are they novel? Yes, they are. They are completely new because machines have created this from nowhere. But are they surprising? Well, Maybe they are not so beautiful. Maybe this can be a notion of surprising. But in general, the results are not so good. Why? Principally because it's really complex to explain logically to a machine how being creative. And this is a really difficult task. But talking about teachers, humans have this big opportunity. In fact, teachers is one of the main differences that characterize humans and that can make us better than machines. This reminds me about a personal story. During my high school period, I was always fascinated by math. I was always looking to solve a problem in a completely and different way. One day, I decided to solve this equation with a completely new approach. I gave the paper to my teacher, and she, looking at the paper, said, well, we don't have the tools to prove the correctness or not of your method. I don't even know if it is correct or not. So it is better if you stick to the plan, if you stick to the usual method. I was so annoyed about that answer, but I know that in that precise moment, I became a mathematician. I became a creative thinker. And maybe that's why I'm here talking about creativity. Maybe if I had a completely different teacher, I wouldn't be here. For example, if my teacher was Socrates, one of the major Greek philosophers, I wouldn't speak about creativity. But why Socrates in particular? Socrates is considered as the father of my ethics, which means the art of giving birth to the ideas of the students. Plato, one of the students of Socrates, tells us a really interesting story and example where Socrates applied this method. Socrates had a student that had no mathematical background, and they decided to solve a simple mathematical problem. We have a square of side length two. And we want to find a square that has the double of the area of this initial square. An easy question. After a few seconds, 
the student said, well, we need only to double the side length. Socrates didn't say anything. He decided only to draw it. And as you can see, well, now we have four small squares equal the first one, which means that the area is four times the initial square. The student was confused. He didn't even know how to answer now the question. But then Socrates decided to draw a simple line, in particular, the diagonal of the first square. After looking at this, the student was able to figure out what was the answer. In fact, if we draw all these diagonals, we are able to construct another square that has exactly two times the error of the first one. What an exciting trip. But we can also understand how much the teacher was important to, for finding this solution. In fact, the major difference between humans and machines are that machines can look at a problem only on a logical perspective, while humans are able to change their point of view. And doing so, they are able to develop creative methods and approaches to new problems. But usually, creativity is not only related to how we solve a problem, but also what kind of problem we want to solve. Also, in this case, I would like to give you an example from my field, mathematics. An historical example in this case. We are in the middle of the 20th century. A student that later on will become one of the major mathematicians for that period, George Datsing, was completely late for his last lesson of the statistical course at university. When he came to the um, in classroom, he saw this blackboard full of problems, and he tried to write down all of them. He was only able to write two of them, and then he decided to solve all these two problems, because they were homeworks. After struggling a lot, he was able to complete them, and then he gave the paper to the professor. After a month, the professor knocked on the door of George Datsing. He had two new research papers in his hand. Yes, because these two problems were not simple homework. They were unsolved problems in the field of statistics and operation research. The same field where later on, George Datsing will become one of the major experts. Here, we can notice that Datsing decided to solve them and struggled a lot, but he had the opportunity to choose what he wanted to do, how to develop its creativity. This is not possible with machines. Machines cannot choose. We have to choose for machines, and we have to decide what problem machines have to solve. You should also understand that behind these two stories, there is a really excitement and great feelings and emotions. Yes, because the first and most important characteristics that differentiate us to the machines are the emotions, the feelings, everything that is with us can inspire us, as well as painters, musicians, artists, or in general, all the people are inspired by their feeling, by their experiences, by their people, so their friends, family, colleagues, everyone can help them 
to change their point of view and to develop their creativity. So, let's try to give an answer to the initial question. Will machine be able to replace human in any possible task? Probably they will replace us in any mechanical task, but they will never be able to replace in creative tasks. Why? Because we have these three major differences. We have the power to change our point of view, thanks to the teachers, but also to other people that can help us developing our creativity. And we have also the power to choose how we want to develop our creativity. Lastly, but not least, we have emotions, feelings that can inspire us and that can also help us empowering our creativity. And then I would like also to remember one important fact. Yes, because you, the people, have the power to create machine. And if one day in the future, a machine will be able to be as creative as a human being, it is because a human, well, a creative human, will be able to teach them how being to, so creative. But until that day, it is better if we focus on developing our creativity. So, let's just be creative. Thank you very much.